gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. Rejeed, finally, a Rejeed. Listen, you can see half the noise. Pretty cringy marketing wank, but not tea bag, all things considered. Of course, it looks like a transformer, what with the overmolding and all that. I can't wait to get into this thing. And bonus nachos, they're clearly telling us it's made in Mexico. New Nuevo Nuevo. Norwalk free for the past 14 days. And not only is it going to be interesting on the inwards, it's going to be interesting, well it is interesting, on the commercial side. Let me weave you a tale of awe and delight. The company that builds these, Tektronics Industries in Hong Kong, they own the Milwaukee brand as well as the Ryobi brand and they build all three. All three are marketed in the homeless despots. This is the only homeless despot house brand and in Australia it's uh, Woodward's or something like that. However, the Rigid brand is actually a, a really, really good tool. Uh, Emerson owns it, but, but licenses this arm to Textronics Industries of Hong Kong. What for increase in their marketing chooch factor? And we see that all across the board. Of course, skill saw, worm drive saws are now owned by Robert Bosch. DeWalt used to be a super skookum saw for woodworking in the 60s. They bought that brand and turned it into plastic garbage. So there's essentially three sets of tools side by each on the shelf. Every single one, very, very similar. The only thing different is the marketing. And these ones are guaranteed for life. They'll replace it, a quibble-free warranty, all that, blah, 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 blah. Well, my friends, the way they can do that is through slippage. And slippage is the industry term for giving away something in the hopes or the knowledge that a lot of it will slip through the cracks. For instance, gift cards on aggregate whole bunch of people buy gift cards, they give them away. How many of those get lost? How many of those, oh, I'm sorry, the confuser doesn't work. You're gonna have to go ahead and call this toll-free number. You get patched through to the Vocon bureaucracy in India. And let me tell you, I worked in India, love Indians, very warm people when you get to know them. However, India is not the place to go if you want things done fast. Eventually, after 45 minutes on the phone, you know, you give up. And that's what they're hoping for. That's what they're going for is this slippage. Now, interesting story about slippage, and it all ties back connection-wise. Best show ever. Hoover, Dirt Devil, was doing this in the UK. They were counting on slippage in that if you bought a new vacuum, you would get uh, free tickets to America or free tickets on holiday. And the tickets ended up costing like 600 bucks a set if you bought a $400 vacuum. They were counting on slippage. So people bought all these vacuums up so they could get free tickets to holidays because the tickets were actually worth more than the thing they were buying. So, you know, piles and piles of discarded vacuum cleaners, people were getting 200 vacuums at their wedding. Like every, you know, it was just ridiculous it made them go bankrupt. And guess who bought them? Tectonic Industries. So, was it a case of a mistaken marketing scam? Or was it a case that the higher-ups at Hoover actually were looking for a package and wanted the company to go tits up? They saw this as a good way to get their golden retirement. I mean, it's not outside the realm of possibility. We see it in the mining industry all the time. We see it in heavy industry all the time where a, uh, a certain location has a certain boss, uh, manager, this type of thing, or team that's just about at retirement age. Lo and behold, they can't make money anymore. They sell the company to another outfit. All these old curmudgeons get packaged out. Everybody's laughing, except for the guys in the trenches. Unfortunately, working is the curse of the party in class and don't get to see the big picture, but there's a lot of nastiness going on there. So I got mixed reports on this slippage because some guys swear by the rigid because they go in and it's no hassles whatsoever. Other guys have told me it's complete bullshit because I try and get a new battery or I try and return a battery that I bought no go. It's only the battery that's serialized that goes with this tool that they'll replace and you got to pay for postage. Home Depot doesn't take it back. That's a huge problem here in Canada because postage will cost you an arm and a dick. So just be aware on first blush, you know, it looks like a good deal, but uh, they got to make their money. They got to get their pound of flesh out of you. So in the words of my favorite contemporary poet, I laughed and laughed to my total dismay. She ain't pretty. She just looks that way. The, this is going to be a pain in the ass. The detents on the lock and the reverse 
are real flimsy. Like if you compare it to the sister tool here, the Milwaukee, it's quite a bit more robust. So, you know, that'll be knocking around. And even if you drop it, yeah, well, it didn't change, but still not that robust. If we look at the trigger, we can tell there's no, yeah, there's no actual physical switch in there that's ka chunk ka chunking the, the pixies on. It's actually just a potentiometer. And that makes sense actually because it's brushless. But still, oh no, it doesn't. On these ones that aren't brushless, there is a detent that gives it, it makes contact and gives it full battery power. But you have to, these actually run on AC. I know, mind blowing, but they actually run on AC. And there's a converter in here that, yeah, it gets the pixies dancing in the right direction to give her go juice. But we're in like sin. Holy. You lift up them skirts and she is a busy, busy lassie. So looking at the plastic, it's the good stuff. You can see here PA6 nylon, glass fiber reinforced 30%. And also TPS, SB, SEBS, that's that butylene overmold. And it's also got styrene on either end of the butylene uh, molecule or chain. So it makes it tougher. So that's the good stuff. I gotta say this is nice though. It's real nice and snug in the enclosure. And there doesn't appear to be any spring of a thing going on. Obviously we've got wires for the LED, the LED lights. And uh, but there's like a ground. What could that ground I've never seen that before in a tool. That ground could only be for induced voltages, induced something going on with induction due to the high frequency switching of this motor. I don't see what else it, why, yeah, interesting. A nice aluminum castings here, quite thick walled. This is the bearing housing. A380, that's a jelly bean casting, a die casting material, 47,000 uh, PSI, tensile, three, what's that, 325 mega megapascals. Good stuff, nicely machined too. Another bearing in there, looks fair size. 690112, 12, yeah, 12 ID, I think double that, looks about, yeah, probably 24 on the OD, bet you can probably take 1,000 pounds, 500 pounds static, good skookum bearing there, and it, there's a Z designator, Z, and uh, unlike tires, that doesn't mean go fast, that's actually just shielded, and it really should, the nomenclature is such that it should be ZZ because it's shielded on both sides, I would assume. However, because uh, some of these are open on the other side, as to minimize expense, they only put on one Z, and that way if the bearing is a different configuration, they can still get away with it. Now in here we have an interesting configuration for a planetary gear set. Of course the ring gear and the planets and the pinion. This is a gear reduction. Of course, this will be spinning a thing in at 25,000 ripples, maybe 30,000 ripples. It's quite small. Uh, we don't want the tail end or the business end spinning that fast because we want to get some torque in there. So that's what the reduction is for. Clearly, centered powdered metallic um, gears. These are extremely cost effective because there's no machining involved. It's powder that goes into a mold, gets pressed. I initially thought you had to keep it under pressure and heat it up in order for the grains to grow together, but no, that's not the case at all. They factor in the shrinkage, and every, the bane of every man at the beach shrinkage, and they, they essentially do it like Play-Doh. Uh, they punch it in a hydraulic die and it pops out and then they heat it up and, and allow it time to grow together. So there's no machining involved. It's a very expeditious way to do it. So we've got the retention end gland off and the whole thing done come apart on me. 
A380, same material as before, but this is completely some sort of new devilry. Cooling fins in the hammer in section. And this is aluminium. This has been uh, broached, extruded type thing. And this is, uh, yeah, it's got some gravity to it. And it has. I don't know if yeah, it stiffens up and then goes past and then turns. So this hole outside here, pinion drives through here, drives through here, deep gear reduction through that planetary, and this will be spinning. And this spin of things looks like twice per revolution it hammers, but it doesn't hammer, it just it like gets hydraulically tighter or greasily tighter. So we're gonna have to have a yeah, we gotta have a look at that. This is totally new devilry. Right, the front part here, it's got some sort of... Initially I thought it was polyamide, but it's uh, some sort of butylene compound. And it's unfortunately it's glued, screwed, and tattooed in there. But this casement is beautiful here, the casting. Of course the Jelly Bean A380 aluminium. Got a big beefy bearing in there. But if you look at it here, the ID and OD are very similar. They're, it's a peel, P, no, P-E-E-R, never heard of them. 6804 RS5 or R54. So you would think that that would be a big skook and bearing, but unfortunately, if you look at that, the ID and the OD, maybe 22 and 32, that doesn't leave much room for balls. It means it's got tiny little balls which means it has to spin, the, the rolling elements internally in this bearing have to spin very quickly. So whereas the other little bearing, uh, it could take 500 pounds, this one you would think would be able to take a lot more than that, unfortunately, because the rolling elements are smaller, counterintuitively, it can probably only take like 500 pounds, maybe 600 pounds. So you would really like to see a beefier bearing in there, you know, bigger wa, but I guess these aren't really high torque units so they can get away with that and of course it's RS it's sealed on both sides and the, the four designator is probably a special high temp grease because as you can see here no touchy touchy Bernie Bernie I've been kind of gawking at this I don't see how it's gonna come apart there's some flats here so it occurred to me that this would unthread. I'll have to try that, but you can see this is must be pressed in because there's some schmoo, yeah, some flakage here from the pressage, the initial pressage. Yeah, I assume you wouldn't put flats on there because you machine this as a round and uh, the flats are an extra step. So. They would only be on there if they were for something. And I'm hoping that they're for threading this in. Okay, now we got the thrust bearing off for the ring gear. We can plainly see we got two flats here and room for a fin face pin spanner. So this must be separated thusly. We'll give her a try anyway. Well, as you can see, I'm having a hell of a time with this. Apprentice marks abound. I uh, tried the old mill writing trick there, hammer and chisel mechanic. She just will not come. So rather than fix it till I fuck it, you know, because I kind of want to give this to the next guy so that it's working. I'm uh, going to take five here, just take a tea break, sit and think about what I've done. In betwixt here and there, something always comes to mind. We'll figure this oh, out. Oh, look at this. <laughs> The meta, the meta is. Uh, 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 oh. Well, I'll be a munchy cheese uncle. It's turning eight. Now we got it moving. Unfortunately, it's just the outer uh, heat sink that's moving, as you can see here. And this is all moving together. So that's not really doing us too, too much good. Once again, for the second time, the old adage rings true. If you uh, reach for a bigger hammer. And that doesn't fix it, your problem's electrical. Well, that's where we're at. Unfortunate Mo, one step forward and two steps back. Didn't appear to get us any 
further ahead, really. Okay, we finally got her moving. And there we go. Comes apart like it was store bought. Now these are some expensive parts and I'm surprised to see them in, in, in the Rigid and not the Milwaukee. But I'm assuming that they're, they're trying out the Rigid to see if it works, if it lasts, and then they'll stick it in the Milwaukee. But yeah, mind blowing. Essentially it's a hydraulic pump. And what's happening here, it's a, it's a vein, well, it's a vein motor. Now there is some intense shit going on in here. Like, huh, these, uh, this is an expensive, all of this is super pricey on the machining side. Like, just incredible on the machining side that you could buy this for 200 bucks. I mean, that's, that is Yankee greenbacks, mind you, but. Now, amazingly, this does indeed work hydraulically. You can see the interveins here. Oh, don't want to lose my ball. You see the veins here that go in. And these are all ground. I mean, just expensive machining processes. Every OD is ground. Like, this thing, this thing uh, is a loss leader, I would say. I don't know how they make any money on this. Like, obviously, volume, but whole, like, all of this is all match fit machined. And that's critical because uh, what's happening here, the way they actually get the, the torque out of it is they're pressurizing a fluid. So as it comes around here, this vein is up here. We're going from a small section, a small volume to a large volume, so the pressure decreases. But then when we go over here, we go from a large volume to a small volume and the pressure increases. Now the pressure bears on the effective area of this vein. So that little section there is what's giving you all your hit and torque. And it's not really gonna be a hit and torque the way it would with a twin hammer or an anvil and hammer mechanism, or traditional style, because what's happening is the pressure doesn't come up square wave, back it actually comes up in a nice steady uplift like they say they actually say on the package or in the in the wank it's a totally different torque and you can't measure it now these devices have way too much torque anyway for a quarter inch drive however this is not going to last and i'll tell you why because the noise you hear is more than likely the cavitation when it goes from high pressure to low pressure. So you're building, building, building pressure and it's got peak pressure here and then all of a sudden, blop, drops off to nothing or very little. The fluid will actually boil because it drops below its vapor pressure. Yeah, the pressure internally drops in the fluid, drops below its vapor pressure. The, the, the liquid turns to vapor instantaneously and then it also implodes that bubble nearly instantaneously. Every time a cavitation bubble implodes, it's like a, it's an explosion, it's but a, an implosion, and it erodes away sections of the vein. And you can see this in diesel engines on the, on the liners. And what's happening is every time there's a little bubble there, a cavitation, and it pops, it pulls away, it erodes away some of that material. So what ends up happening is this oil will be full of schmoo and this will not be shiny it'll be very dull and of course then it won't seal as well as soon as you don't have sealing you can't increase the pressure that means you can't increase the pressure bearing on this reduces your torque so it won't crap out right away but it will get steadily progressively weaker and weaker which is an interesting failure mode now, in a future video, we're going to go over the electrics, which are interesting because it's a brushless motor, and we're also going to put it back together and test it out. Thanks a lot for watching. Keep your dick in a vice.